So, now let us write out the equations of the Kalman filter. If you remember we had a system, we are referring to the uh, system which is given uh, given here, a system whose state and observations are given by these. Remember that W k's and V k's are independent uh, Gaussian noise. The initial state x 0 is also uh, independent of W k and V k is uh, and that is all and it is itself a Gaussian uh, Gaussian vector. The x k's evolve linearly is as, as written here. The observations that we get are also linear observations. The disturbances u k are known exogenous sequences. Now, what we will uh, what we will do next is actually what I will do is just write out first the Kalman filter equations and then we will see how, how these are uh, uh, we will then try to interpret and understand them ok. So, so here is the Kalman filtering theorem. So, consider the linear linear Gaussian System above with uh, with say no with, and we will assume that the all the parameters are known with known parameters with known parameters and what are the parameters? They are the a k's, the c k's which appear in the observations, the f k, g k which are coefficients of u the q k which is the variance of w k, r k which is the covariance of v k, the initial uh, the mean of the initial state x hat 0 and the mean and the variance of the covariance of the initial state which is sigma 0 ok. And uh, with known prior distribution known prior distribution pi 0 which is which is given by x at 0 comma sigma 0 ok. Then pi k of x remember pi k of x was just the probability that x k equals x given all the observations from up until time k then this particular this, this pi k of x is in, is given by pi k of x is is a gaussian is a gaussian distribution with mean x given by x hat k and and its covariance given by sigma k okay so what is x hat k then x hat k is the conditional expectation of x k given y 1 to y k and sigma k is, is the covariance of the covariance of uh, bit is, is this sigma k is x minus uh, minus x hat k into x minus x k minus x hat k transpose right. So, the, this is the covariance uh, this is the covariance of uh, uh, covariance sigma k right. So, pi k is a Ga Gaussian random variable with with the, with, the, with mean x hat k and covariance given by sigma k. Now, the and the algorithm so in and now the 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 distribution is specified in terms of x hat k and sigma k. Now, how does this uh, how do we find this x hat k's and sigma k's? So, that is where the recursive computation can is is comes up. So, here x hat k comma sigma k are computed recursively as follows. So, I will I, I will write out the algorithm on the next page. So, this is the Kalman filtering algorithm. Okay. 
here is the Kalman filtering algorithm. So, so for for time k and for time k equal to 1 to whatever and and given observation y k. So, compute compute the following recursively. So, your x hat k plus so first we have like we had for the other uh, for the more general filtering equation we first have a prediction step ok. So, so first we predict the mean ok uh, given given the observations you have up until that time. So, x hat k plus 1 given by uh, given k. So, this turns out to be a k x hat k plus f k u k. We also do a prediction of the measurement that we would make using the information that we have up until that time. So, sitting at time k we predict the measurement that we have uh, we would get at time k plus 1 that is therefore, in a straightforward way is equal to x hat k plus 1 given k plus g k plus 1 sorry there is this, this is c k plus 1 g k plus 1 u k plus 1. Then you have sigma the sigma k plus 1 given k this is equal to a k sigma k a k transpose plus q k. Now, what is the significance of sigma k plus 1 given k? Well, actually what the, these uh, the x hat k plus 1 given k is only the mean of of the of x k plus 1 given the observation up until time k. Uh, here you have the covariance of the same term of of x k plus 1 given the observations up until that time k. But the important thing is that these this actually these two are enough for us to specify actually the distribution of x k plus 1 given given the information up until time k. So, it is enough to give the predicted distribution the, uh, the predicted distribution and so and the reason for that is that the predicted distribution is also itself a Gaussian because because of what I said we have all these x's and y's are all jointly Gaussian. So, so this here is itself uh, uh, these two these these two here are specifying for us together a Gaussian distribution all right. So, so this here is my let me write here this is a prediction step prediction step and specifies a Gaussian specifies a Gaussian distribution. Okay, and the Gaussian being mean x hat k plus 1 given k comma sigma k plus 1 given k right. So, this is your uh, this is the uh, this is the distribution. So, this this so now now notice that this depend now x hat k plus 1. So, this is the predicted step predicted step uh, prediction step this depends itself on x hat k which is the uh, the uh, which is the mean that you have from the previous time step. It also depends on sigma k which is the variance that you would have from the previous time step right. So, putting these two together now, now what we need to do is use this to predict uh, use this to compute the uh, similar mean and and uh, uh, similar mean and covariance at the next time step ok. So, you have s k plus 1. So, for the so in order to do so what we need to do now is 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 compute a similar mean and covariance for the next time step. So, in other words now what we need to do is the next step which is the measurement update step. So, to do the measurement update step let us write out some intermediate calculations. So, let us define s k plus 1 as c k plus 1 sigma k plus 1 given k c k plus 1 transpose plus r k plus 1 this is s k plus 1. Now, using s k plus 1 
we, we, def, we do our measurement update. So, we have our new x hat k plus 1, so which is the conditional which is the mean conditional mean of x k plus 1 given the observation up until time k plus 1. So, we have x hat k plus 1 equal to the predicted x hat k plus 1. So, you have this plus sigma k plus 1 given k c k transpose s k plus 1 inverse times here is where the measurement update comes up. So, this is your new measurement minus what we had as the prediction of the new measurement. Right? Now, this gives us therefore, the mean at the next time step, the mean of the of, of our uh, uh, so this gives us basically the mean of pi of the distribution pi k plus 1. And what is the covariance of that distribution? The covariance of that distribution is sigma k plus 1 and that it sorry sigma k plus 1 here sigma k plus 1 is equal to sigma k plus 1 given k minus sigma k plus 1 given k c k plus 1 transpose s k plus 1 inverse c k plus 1 times sigma k plus 1 given k. The, so, this therefore completes our, our description. So, what we have here is that x hat k here at any time k. So, your pi k remember was was equal to the uh, a Gaussian with mean x hat k and covariance sigma k. So, you start off with something like that and what we get is a new Gaussian now here with which is pi k plus 1 which is which has mean x hat k plus 1 and covariance sigma k plus 1. The, the, the uh, as I mentioned there are these two steps one is the, pre, uh, the prediction step the other the other step here is the measurement update. These are precisely the two steps that we do when we were uh, when uh, when we wrote out the more general equation uh, for uh, general filtering recurs recursion. Now, uh, what this is uh, the important thing to note here in the in the measurement update is this beautiful new term that uh, that shows up in a very explicit manner, and that measure and that is what allows us to make this uh, this so recur so easily uh, recursive. The new term that shows up here is is this y k plus 1 given y uh, y k plus 1 minus y k plus 1 given uh, given given k. So, what is this term? This term is is basically we can we can think of this term as this term here is the difference between difference between tomorrow's observation and today's estimate or today's estimate or prediction let us say today's prediction of tomorrow's observation. So, it is the it is this difference between what you actually see when uh, you you would actually see tomorrow and what you think you would see or what you predict you would see ba uh, tomorrow based on the information that you have so far. So, this is precisely you can say the additional information that you have learnt from the new observation that you could not have that you did not know from the previous from all the previous information that you already had. So, if y k plus 1 which is the new uh, the, the new observation if that turns out to be predictable uh, using all the previous observations 
then you would actually get that this this would be 0. So, the new observation gives you no no additional information than what you had from 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 what you already had from your previous observations. So, rightly so this this term is actually often called also the innovation. So, this sequence is called the innovation. So, the this is the reason this uh, is it essentially is the 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 novel or new innovation new information that has come to us because of the new observation y k plus 1. So, what does this basically tell us then? It tells us that the way to do a the measurement update is to take your earlier prediction which is coming from here, take the prediction that we have earlier and take a linear combination of that with the innovation with the in and why do we need to take the innovation because this is this here remember is the additional information that is coming up and we take the linear combination because after all remember every our new estimate has to be a linear function of everything that we knew so far. So, it is a function it is a linear function therefore, of our prediction best prediction and the new information. And in in the in, in incorporating the new information, we are really only keeping that information that we could not have pre predicted from our previous observations. So, so the as a consequence of this, the this is how the uh, sort of the new update looks. The the uh, so you have a combination of a prediction plus any you know you look at all the uh, incremental new information that has come in from the innovation. For, uh, from the new observations in terms of the innovation sequence and then use the linear combination of the two to get to uh, get to the new uh, get to the new estimate right. So, this only helps us of course, estimate the mean from here we also need to uh, do something similar for the uh, for the uh, for, uh, for the covariance and that is actually exactly something similar ex is what is worked out here for the covariance as well right. right? So, this is uh, the, these two put together give give us give us uh, this this prediction step and the measurement update step together give us give us the Kalman filter. So, what is the secret uh, of uh, that makes this Kalman filtering equation work so, uh, so, so easily and uh, Kalman filtering work out so easily. So, I mean we have we as I said we we have a complicated uh, integral where for which we do not in general have an explicit solution. Why did we get an explicit solution so neatly in this particular in the, uh, for the, for this linear Gaussian problem. The reason for that is actually a property of Gaussians itself and that uh, that property is often known by the name uh, by this very colorful name it is called the Swiss army knife of Gaussian distributions ok. So, this is called the Swiss army knife of Gaussians. So, if you remember this uh, Swiss army knife is this multipurpose knife which can be used to uh, for for many 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 um, uh, many unique uh, little and assorted different tasks. So, this is this result is something of that you know it has it it, it can it is it is a combination of many different tools all wrapped into one ok. So, how does one what, what is the uh, how does one apply uh, what is the result let me let us write that down ok. So, consider two Gaussian densities the densities are given in as follows. So, it is so one is a density. So, here you have a, a density which will be written as a function of y ok. The mean is c times x and the covariance is r and the other density is a function of x its mean is mu and its covariance is p ok. Now, what is if you so if I just multiply what this the result basically says is that this the product of these two can be factored in this neat way. N of y r times x mu p this 
this here is the following this product of these two densities is is the following it's it's actually can be written as p of a, a this n of y with mean c mu and uh, covariance c p c transpose plus r times n of now x with the mean m plus uh, let us say k bar times y minus c mu and a covariance p minus k bar c p. I will explain what m and k bar are. k bar here is p c transpose c p c transpose plus r the whole inverse m is mu plus k bar y minus c mu. Now, what is the let us let us just absorb this a little bit and then I will explain the consequences of this as well. So, the so what are, what do we have here you have a density here which is written in terms of y and another density in which is written in terms of x. But if you notice that the density of y its mean actually depends on x right and it, this is the same x here. So, in other words this here this density here is actually a density a conditional density of of y given x. So, give, you are fixing an x here uh, out here and uh, fixing the x and then you are computing the density of y and it turns out to be in the form c uh, you know with mean c x and covariance r. So, this is really capturing a, a model of the form uh, this this here is capturing a model of the form if uh, y equals c x plus noise something of that sort is being captured. So, a, a model of this form is captured here. Then you have on the the next term here is simply this is a just a density a marginal density of x itself. When you take the product of these two what we are effectively doing is uh, so, so this here is a mo capturing a model of as I said y, y equal to c x plus noise and the density here is the density of y given x equal to x. So, it is a probability density of y given x equal to x that is this, this term. The term here is simply the uh, marginal density of x. So, this is simply the probability of x equal to x. So, as a consequence of that this here the, the left hand side here is the probability that of y equal to y times and x equals x and that has that is effectively been written in this form it is given it is written in the form probability of y given x equal to x times probability of x equal to x right. Now, now this that is what we have here on the left hand side. Now, what do we have on the right hand side? Well, on the right hand side the roles have been reversed. Now, what we have here this now looks like a pro probability of x given given y equal to y because if you see there is there is now a y here which has come up in the mean of x right the same y that was present here. So, the y this y has shown up here which was which is also present here ok. So, this is now a probability of x given y and what we have out here is just the probability of y itself. So, it is really what you have done here is written the joint density of of x and y in two different ways one by writing it as y given x times the density of x and the other case you have written written it as x given y times the density of y. But what is the importance of this? Well, it, it is giving us therefore a way of going from posterior to prior to from prior to posterior. So, if you have a model in which you have a prior distribution x right and you have you have a prior distribution x you have an observation y and from there if you wanted to compute you wanted to know what is now the pro the the posterior model well the posterior model is given by this this the pro the the posterior distribution from the observation observation y is given by this expression here it is p of it's 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 this is your expression p of x given x given y right so let me let me write out the consequence more explicitly here so we have therefore 
we have a couple of results. So, first is if I take the integral of the left hand side, the integral of the on the left on the left hand side with respect to x this now because of this 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 decomposition that we have on the right hand side see the earlier the what we have what would what we would have had on the left hand side is that we would have had x sitting in both of these densities now what has happened is the x has come out x is now here right so if i integrate this out on the on the right hand side i am left with just this the first term here which is n the normal density uh, as a function of y with mean c mu and c p c transpose plus r okay so as a uh, therefore therefore what we are left so so the the therefore the the term on the right hand side that uh, the the term that got integrated out this particular term is in fact the posterior density so in other words the n of y given c x comma r n of x mu p divided by the integral of the same term this is equal to this is what we have here. So, now from here it is very easy to actually compute uh, uh, to, to compute the Kalman filtering equations all one needs to really observe is um, uh, all one ne really needs to do is, is apply uh, ca compute the prediction and the up measurement update steps by using this particular Swiss army knife formula that we have. So, let us let us do that in a moment. So, so first you have the prediction step. We have our prediction step, which we will in the prediction step. Note, remember, we are we are doing x p x k plus one given y one to y k. Now, what we will do is we will actually apply induction for we will we will assume that uh, the filtered Gaussian density. So, we will assume that pi pi k of x k is uh, is in fact a Gaussian. So, we will assume that the filtered density is a Gaussian. And then from there conclude that the uh, the density at the next time step is also Gaussian. So, and since we are starting from a Gaussian density, this will ensure that the density at each time step is Gaussian. Right? So, so uh, so we will assume that pi k of x x k is pi k is is Gaussian and equal to x hat k with sigma k all right this is uh, e e with this particular density now we let's compute this p p x k plus 1 given y 1 to k and that's equal to the integral n x k plus 1 a k x k plus a k x k which is the mean q k times n x k x hat k. So, this is remember just coming from our uh, from our filtering master filtering equation this is uh, this this is the system model this is the prior. is the prior and what we find is that the prediction is itself Gaussian if we using the Swiss army knife equation. So, we get that this is the Gaussian function of x k plus 1 with mean x hat k plus 1 given k comma with covariance sigma k plus 1 
given k. And now we can apply the measurement update. So, measurement measurement update the measurement update is p gives us p x k plus 1 given y 1 to y k plus 1. Since we are predicting now using the additional observation y 1 to y k plus 1 and that is that is simply uh, given by this. C k plus 1, x k plus 1, the mean this with this mean and r k plus 1 times the uh, the prediction that we that we just derived which is x k plus 1 uh, normal of x k plus 1 x hat k plus 1 given k comma sigma k plus 1 given k divided by the integral of the same thing the integral remember over over a, uh, the integral over x k plus 1. So, it is normal of k plus 1 and uh, again this is uh, using the Swiss army knife equation we can actually find that this is nothing but again a Gaussian with with mean x hat k plus 1 given k plus k bar k plus 1 times y k plus 1 minus y k plus 1 given k and covariance sigma k plus 1 given k minus k bar k plus 1 c k plus 1 sigma k plus 1 given k where k bar is simply sigma k plus 1 given k c k plus 1 transpose s k plus 1 inverse and s k plus 1 is is as above in the in the in the in uh, defined here this is your s k plus 1 all right. So, that is what we have uh, we have we can now we, so all that we have used here is really just the uh, is is only the uh, Swiss army knife uh, formula and it is just by induction given us that if you start off with the Gaussian prior then you get a posterior and you have Gaussian noise in your measurements then you get a posterior which is Gaussian and the explicit formula can be computed using the Swiss army knife equation all right ok. So, this completes our study of the uh, of uh, of the Kalman filter explicitly. Uh, we will uh, what this is uh, we will we will see in the next in the next class is combine this filter with the linear Gaussian problem and make uh, make a few observations about it and then uh, and and uh, and take the theory of uh, partially observed systems in to the next step then ok. Thank you.